Hindu gang attacks untouchable Christian family for quote unquote converting Hindus. Um, just a heads up, guys. This story basically uh, covers a description of torture. Um, on December 29th, a Dalit Christian family in the state of Karnataka in India was attacked by a group of right-wing Hindu nationalists in their home under the suspicion of conducting illegal conversions. One of the family members, uh, Akshay Kumar Karnagavni, uh, a local pastor was organizing annual prayers with his family when seven men allegedly entered his home and attacked them. Both Akshay and his nephew were assaulted. The perpetrators accused the female members of being professional sex workers. That's the nice way to put it. Um, a, bot, a pot of hot lentil soup was thrown at Akshay's wife, Kavita, inflicting severe burns. A cousin who was with the family had her sari ripped off while being called a sex worker. Before leaving the household, the attackers threatened to burn them to death if they tried to convert people again in the future. Recently, the Karnataka legislative body passed an anti-conversion bill that mandates that all conversions must be preemptively reported to a magistrate just days prior to this attack. Uh, at this time, there's no evidence that the family has tried to convert people. So um, I wanted to talk about this news because, one, this is a very severe the attack that happened on this family. And two, I thought it was important because we've been covering a lot of news that has been happening in Karnataka recently, um, especially in light of the uh, rising Christian violence and also in light of the anti-conversion bill um, that was passed, I think, in the lower house of the assembly. And I can't remember where it is in terms of um, the upper house. Um, but anyways... Um, there's been a severe spike in violence against Christians in this area. And um, also, I uh, make an effort to try to talk about um, uh, violence on lower castes or Dalits here on this channel. Um, but, well, Armin, I, I have one piece of commentary that I want to get in. But, um, Armin, what, what is your reaction to this? Um, so maybe we should explain the and for, so for people who don't know that and what this anti-conversion thing is and the fact that a lot of people in a, a lot of far right uh, Hindutva people in India are now becoming very aggressive again over anything that they could see they perceive to be as a or suspect to be as an attempt to convert Hindus to um, Christianity or Islam like this is a trend like for people for people who might new, be new here and haven't seen this like it's becoming law that you can't convert people um, out of hinduism but the other way around by the way is completely cool you know if you want to convert people from um islam or christianity to hinduism that is celebrated but the other way around they're making it illegal in some states um and also there it's not just the law it's the mob that shows up as well and what they considered as forced conversion is any any suspicion, like even having, like we have examples of just people just having Bibles around. They're considered just like as a form of conversion. Uh, ch um, Christian children um, praying, you know, like having a prayer during Christmas was attacked. Santa Claus was burned. Uh, Valentine's Day is considered to be a conversion tactic. Um, basically, any form of... Uh, advertisement of christianity or, or any form of like having publicly being christian could be seen as a suspicion of conversion which could open the door for you to be violently attacked by hindutva mob um this is basically hindu sharia like even worse to be honest but yeah that's you wanted to go on say you wanted to add something yeah well that was some of the background so more specifics into this anti-conversion measure in um karnataka which i think is really interesting one thing about it is that usually when anti-conversion things are in india in different states because there's been at least nine to ten other states who have passed things about um regarding this before usually they at least try to make the appearance of it being against forced conversion right which 
theoretically, like we would be against too. Like we don't like people being forcibly converted. Like this happens to young girls in Pakistan from minority communities all the time. Like we strongly oppose that. We talk about that. Uh, we report about that often. Um, however, their standards for what is forced, like Armin just said, is extremely low and dubious at best. And but with Karnataka, they've like basically completely dropped the illusion of it about being it forced at all. The language of many of the people putting pushing forward these bills is just anti-conversion. They've just dropped the forced. They're saying we mm. we just don't like conversion. Period, which is every th this is against <laughs> the the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. <laughs> okay, <laughs> which uh, India and unless I'm out of my mind is a is a, um has signed as is a treaty to, right? Mm. Um, Signature. everyone should have the freedom to do this of their own volition, right? Um, and so, um. Part of, the, part of the things about this bill is that you have to report to a magistrate 30 days in advance of your uh, conversion, which I think is insane. The state has no place in being made a party to your own personally held beliefs. Um, if you don't uh, pr profess this to the state in the, the timeline in which they dictate, you can be prosecuted if you are found to be um, uh, forcibly or just converting people in general without also giving declaration to the state 30 days in advance, then you can be prosecuted and sentenced, fined and sentenced to several years in jail. Um, but when I was thinking about the story, there are two things about this that I think are very interesting to think about. One is the violence and subjugation on Dalit or uh, like, it's, I don't want to say lower caste because it's outside of the caste systems. Um, so uh, the, the violence on oppressed caste people's like bodies, their communities, right? Because for a lot of lower caste people, they look outside of Hinduism to try to find a form of liberation from the violence and subjugation that they experience through the caste system. And this is why historically, the majority of the Muslim community in India, like, I believe 85% of it is from lower castes. Um, there's a large percentage of the Christians in India are lower castes, and there are many Sikhs in India that are historically lower caste. Um, and because they converted to those religions because to get out of the oppression for being lower caste. That's why. Exactly. Okay, yeah. So I view this violence on Dalit Christians as a, um, another means of maintaining caste supremacy um, and hegemony. And um, the other thing that I think is really interesting, and I was thinking about this um, as, a, as a parallel. And Armin, I wanna know what you think about this. I think of this, I'm starting, this is a thought I had today. I'm starting to think of this anti-conversion movement and fervor in India as a parallel to the blasphemy fervor in Pakistan. Whereas mm. the state has now, not all states in India, but many, at least nine to 10 states in India have legislated forms of anti-conversion bills. And now what do we see? Less than two weeks after the Karnataka legislative body, you know, pushing this forward, we see mobs taking it upon themselves because they have been validated and um, legitimized by the state apparatus to then take this up enforcement upon themselves. Very interesting by the state. Yeah. What What do you think about that um, parallel that I thought of today? That is very interesting comparison. Yeah. Um. It will also be more more of. I mean, okay. The, it's not as extreme, right? Less people are being killed compared to Pakistan, right? Um. However, what it what is parallel is the fact that a lot of people now feel more emboldened that they could go after people who are so what's what what the muslims in pakistan are considered to be blasphemy the the some of these hindus in india are considered to be like they call it for they're calling a conversion we're anti-conversion right 
um, just going by different names, but it's the same thing. Uh, I would be it would be more similar if the state like uh, fails to punish the people who are doing the conversions in the eyes of Hindutva, and the Hindutva, you know, the Hindutva mob says like, okay, this is a crime. Then why are you not punishing them? And this is why we actually have to use the mob because the state itself is not following through with executing these laws. That would make it very, very similar to the mob mentality in Pakistan. But again, this is another example of why India is like, in their hatred uh, against Pakistan, they are increasing their speed in becoming more like Pakistan, uh, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, liberal Hindu, like, this is why I'm keep, I am keep trying to say, like, many Hindus, not all, like, many doesn't mean majority. Of course, this is not the majority of Hindus in India. If it was, it would be the end of India right now. Like, obviously, what we were, this is, like, we, like, this has, even if it gets up to 5% of India, it would be horrible. Like, if it gets up to 5%, you have to understand that, this level of insane radicalism, um, if it ever gets like, at, it, it would do a lot of damage at low percentages, right? You know that you're, you have a far right problem if it gets to 1% to 2%. Like these are, these, this, is a, this is a huge problem. Like radicalism is growing in India. And every time we say that, people think that we're suggesting that most Hindus think like, act like this. We're not, we never suggested that. Um, yeah. Oh, well, the one <laughs> um, piece of uh, good news is that the police have booked seven of the alleged attackers under the um, Prevention of Atrocities Against Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes Act of the Indian Penal Code. And they've been booked under a lot of other sections of the um, Indian law. So that's been good. Um, I do appreciate that the Indian Penal Code does have a special section of the law that is specifically to prevent uh, atrocities against um, lower castes or Dalits. Um, there was um, so a little star, star comments. Oh, we have some good comments. We should go over. Um, yeah. S T R D S T is saying, "I came here from a Hindu Discord server." They are spamming to report this. Well, yeah. I'm not surprised at all. Uh, we are quite used to targeted mass reporting, but uh, thank you for letting us know. Yeah, this is um, why we're getting all the spam. People, guys, again, people don't like us talking about. It. People want uh, everybody outside of India to think Hinduism is this peaceful, loving religion, and India is great in every way possible. And and there's no pro there's nothing there's no issues and every time we talk about these issues if they want it, they want you to think we're lying that's why they keep trying to report our videos that's why they keep trying to spam our live chat that's why they keep reporting our twitter and facebook account so you can see like there's a targeted uh, you know um attack and this is that's this is what we have to deal with because we're talking about stories where it doesn't get discussed in non english non india channels right so Please, if you if you want to support us, please like the video, share the video, leave a comment, because this is what we have to deal with. Yeah, but go on. Um, Shubo is saying, um, the minority Christian groups are so small in population that even if they are converting, like converting other Hindus, which I doubt, it can never affect the majority Hindu population. Absolutely ridiculous. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. And... Um, this is a comment from liberal Bengali Hindu, which I do think is worth touching on. He's saying, actually, conversion to other religi religions because of caste oppression is not 100% correct. They have suffered the same op oppression. And yes, I do want to acknowledge that casteism 100% exists across religions in India. It'd be ridiculous to deny otherwise, right? It's well documented. Um, in the Christian community, in the Muslim community, there are many examples of where these religions or religious leaders from these communities have made explicit provisions to uphold caste, or particularly Brahmin supremacy, right? Um, so I'm not denying that casteism um, exists across religions in India. I'm just talking about the fact that it, whether or not it exists, trying to leave Hinduism to escape caste oppression 
is still a motivating factor for many people, was, whether or not they are was. still going to face it in another religion. Yeah, the, so yeah, you, so, but liberal Bengali Hindu, you're correct to saying that this is not 100% the thing. Like, they, they still, like, even after leaving Hinduism, they still, it was a casteism was created in, the, in, in those communities as, as well. But this does not contradict the fact that there was an attempt to, um, there was a lot of push to leave Hinduism because of the caste system and these are not mutually exclusive even though they recreated caste system in the hindu community in the christian community and in the islamic community but if not i'm not saying all of the motivation was because of the escaping the caste system but a large there was a major impact there was a, a lot of it was because uh, outcast people felt like that they don't have a community and this was like and they were being oppressed so saying that that was a motivation, that doesn't mean like every, it's not black and white. It doesn't mean that they managed to be completely successful by doing so, right? Um, anyways, let's move to the next stock comments because the next ones are funny. Um, oh yeah, uh, Hindu Loveja is saying, this is our local Hindu patrol for the day. Um, saying, come have to many. India, Armin. I hate, I dare you. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. He, let me tell you, I was I was planning to actually go to India right before I got um, all these people, trolls attacking me and um, threatening me and threatening my family and coming even after the after even after children in my family, right? Um, and then after that, I was dared a lot to come to India, and I'm never coming to India. <laughs> I know I mean, it's I, such I love a India. bummer. Like, yeah, our I love India, but recently told yeah. us not to visit, and I've started to study India a lot more recently, and now I want to go more than ever, and so I'm really bummed mm -hmm. out that I've but been look at, But this is a this is a guys don't don't you have to understand this comment is a threat. This comment is like you have to understand this is a threat. Okay, we are okay, but the next one is even funnier. It's it's also very revealing about how Hindu. You want to see how Hindu mind operates, um, and what they consider an insult. Highlight the next comment. Yeah. Take so it. the next one is also from the local Hindu patrol saying Susanna is low caste, lower than mm. low. You know what? If it like, I honestly personally would be honored to be a Dalit. Okay, I. I would be honored to be a Dalit and fuck you for ever considering that to be an insult. Yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was very revealing guys. Like you have, this is what their mind, this is how their minds operate. That's what they consider an insult. Just let them, just let these, all these hundred for come here and just show you what they stand for and how their minds operate. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna go. She to was, we are a big happy Dalit family. <laughs> yeah. <Aww. laughs> I mean, we would. I mean, I don't want to take other people's identity, but if yeah, they, we're not um, all Dalit, but we do have a lot of amazing, very outspoken Dalit people in our community. Yeah, I'm if, very uh, proud yeah. to have them. Yeah, yeah, we're not we're not Dalit, but if we were Dalit, we we we, we would be proud of it. We would be proud of it, and we would be happy to be associated with the rest of the Dalits who are are here and support our channel, right? Just by being here. Um, yes, caste system is barbaric. Very true. And again, guys, no, don't let anybody tell you that the caste system the caste system has nothing to do with Hinduism. There's nothing more Hindu than the caste system. There's literally nothing more. Hindu than the caste system. It's Hindu through and through from the beginning till now. Okay. So mm -hmm. yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna do a stream on the on this as well to show you how Hindu the caste system is. This is uh this is a funny comment from Nobara. Hindufa hurls castic <laughs> hurls castic castist abuses, also Hindufa. The caste system was introduced by the British. <laughs> <laughs> True. Oh True. <laughs> Atheist Republic needs your help. 
We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Abhabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.